now in this video, we're going to look at the photodiode. So you use it reverse bias, and uh, you put the voltage across it. The amount of current falling on it, so it looks like an LED, but uh, the arrows are pointing the other way. They're pointing in because it's a photodiode instead of out. Out is an LED. Now, it's a reverse bias. Based on how much light is falling on it, it will pass a certain amount of current. And uh, so it'll set the current. Doesn't matter if we even have this resistor there. But uh, we added this resistor because at some point I want the current to stop. Somewhere around about 20 milliamps. So with 5 volts, 220 ohm resistor, that's when the current will stop rising. And uh, that'll help uh, protect the photodiode. I don't think I've ever burnt one out though. So I don't know if they do have that problem. But in any case, we also have a multimeter in series with it because when you have series components, they have the same amount of current going through them. So you gotta put the meter in series and uh, we will look at uh, how much current we're getting. So now I have uh, two of them right here. This one looks like an LED, but it's not. It doesn't emit light if you forward bias it and run current through it. It just uh, detects light. And uh, so you reverse bias it, long lead the anode to the resistor, Short lead, the cathode up one spot to the positive supply right there. We have the BPW34 here. I think this is the more common one. And uh, it's got a data sheet and everything. I don't have a part number with that one. But the data sheet doesn't have the pin layout. So I assume this is the uh, anode down here and the cathode up there. There's a little extra silver and a little dot there. And the reason why I assume that's the way it is is because it works like a light dependable current source this way if I turn it around same with this one they just let a lot of current go through them whether there's light on them or not the multimeter is set to measure milliamps there to the milliamp setting and we have the probes but that's uh, as far as we're gonna go is milliamps we're actually gonna get to the microamps we'll look at that later but you start off with a higher measurement than you can expect the uh, probes that come from the uh, wires there. I have alligator clips. I crimped them onto uh, wires, breadboard wires, so I can just insert them into the board wherever I want. So first we'll come over here. I'm gonna try not to obscure the light or uh, disturb anything. Looks like that's a bad spot right there. But in any case, there we have about uh, 0.1 milliamps of current. So 111 microamps approximately. It'll be a little more accurate if we set it to the microamp setting. I set it over there, and you can see it's the same amount of current. So, we don't have to worry about limiting current. With this light level, let's get the uh, flashlight here and make it a little wider. Hopefully I don't obscure that. But th there you can see we have more current. And uh, there we go. We got pretty close to about 20 milliamps. I'll shrink this down. And uh, looks like that's about where we're going to end. So... I have the power supply limiting current as well to about uh, 20 milliamps. So we'll zoom back and see how much we can get without it. So there we hit the uh, limit. It says CC down there. And uh, so we're going to uh, raise this. I'll just go right to uh, 60. And uh, pretty sure it'll be below that. We should be good to go. And there you can see we got about uh, 43 milliamps of current. We'll go to the uh, resistor, other end of the resistor. So I don't know if it gets too hot like that, but there you can see with the uh, resistor, we have a lower current, even though we were getting the same current before, whether we had the resistor or not, because we're trying to get too much. So now we're going to zoom in to the other one right there and take a look at that as is. And there you can see we see no current, but it's actually very, very low. So I'll get the light on there. There you can see we got about uh, 0.64 milliamps. And let's see if that's the same. Should be 0.5, yeah, 0.68. So it's just the angle of the light probably. And what we're going to do now, that was less than a milliamp. So we'll go to microamp. So microamp is one one thousandth of a milliamp one millionth of an amp. So there you can see with this light level there's a point uh, or 2.8. I'll uh, make the lamp a little brighter. There you can see it go up right there. And we can quickly take a look with uh, this flashlight and uh, there we go we got about 700 microamps. 
So now we're going to do another demonstration. We have the uh, negative side basically of the probe. It's actually ground. That's your reference point voltage. And then we have the red probe right there. The uh, jumper in any case that is connected to the probe. We're going to measure voltage. When you're done measuring current, get it always get it off of measuring current. So we're going to measure the voltage with this meter. I just have one setting there. I always remember to use a higher setting than what you can expect to be measuring. But in any case, there you can see we have 0.276 volts while we are measuring voltage. That is at this light level. I'll turn the uh, overhead lamp up. But there you can see it go up. I'll turn it back down the lamp. I think it looks better on camera when the lamp is down lower. But uh, we got the flashlight there, the bright light. There you can see we got about 0.493 volts, about 0.5 volts if we get a bright enough light on it. So that is used kind of like a mini solar panel. It can't provide much current and uh, practically none I don't think but you can actually get a voltage if you want to do it that way where you get a reference voltage. So if you have them backwards so pretty sure that's the cathode up there anode down there which is what happens if you have like an LED or something and you put bright enough light on it it builds up a voltage and the anode becomes more positive, actually anode down here, becomes more positive, cathode becomes more negative. So now we have these backwards, we just get a negative number right there. So, there you can see we got a negative voltage, that tells me I have the jumpers in the wrong spot. That uh, the anode is down here, and the cathode is up there. We should get a positive number like that. So in any case, that was just a bonus uh, demonstration when you learn about photodiodes. You'll probably hear they act like a mini solar cells. This one though apparently does not and I'll test it one more time. And uh, so we got a little bit of a voltage there it looks like so maybe it will build up. Oh, Actually it's not part of a circuit. It's just floating for the most part. But in any case this one doesn't look like it really builds up any voltage if any at all for the most part. But uh, this one definitely does. So when you hear they can act like little solar panels, it's uh, probably that one. But in any case, I'm going to end it there. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting. Click like, subscribe, the bell, all that. Donate to Patreon if you can. That helps out the most. Always turn off your multimeter. Get it off measuring current. And uh, I will see you in the next video.